Okay, so today we're going to talk about skin. Well, not exactly skin, but epithelial tissues. All right, so where do you find epithelial tissue in the body? Well, you find it lining things. So in order for something to be lined, it needs to be hollow, right? Like a box. You might line a box with tissue paper. Um, so you would find epithelial tissue lining things like your mouth and your stomach and your intestines and your blood vessels. Anything that has a hollow center or hollow parts. Um, these linings help maintain boundaries. Um, we saw that the other day in uh, the video we did with looking at the plasma membrane. Anyway, um, they also cover stuff. So when we do some dissections later in the year, you'll see that um, a lot of organs are covered with an epithelial layer. Um, these also help maintain the boundaries between different things. The third place you'll find epithelial is in glands. A modified epithelial tissue is what makes up your salivary glands and your lymph nodes and your um, thymus and all those glands in your body. So linings, coverings, and glands. Um, the glands, if we're looking back at necessary life functions, are necessary for growth, reproduction, and responsiveness. All right, so what do epithelial tissues do? the same thing we talked about a minute ago, they're the one thing that forms the boundaries. They have a protective function as well, at least in certain places, and they reduce friction. Um, for example, if you've ever tried to swallow anything with a dry mouth or a dry throat, it's not, it hurts actually, um, because the mucus that's produced to help swallow food is made from the epithelium. Um, right. Absorption and diffusion. Well, absorption, hopefully the first thing you think about are the intestines because that's where the nutrients, once they're broken down, are absorbed into um, the body and into the bloodstream. And that happens through epithelial tissues. And diffusion, we've talked about this a bunch actually, the oxygen and the carbon dioxide that diffuse into and out of the blood in the lungs also happens through epithelial tissue, okay? So, um, oh, and then, of course, at the cellular level, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happened at the capillaries through epithelial tissue. Um, cleaning and filtration. When you breathe in air, your, your nose has, you know, large hairs that you can see, and that helps trap some stuff. Mucous membranes line the whole of your upper respiratory tract, and they have tinier hairs, and they produce a lot of mucus. So a lot of the stuff that you breathe in is um, taken out of that air before it gets down into the delicate tissues in your lungs. Filtration. The only place that occurs in the body that I know of, anyway, is in the kidneys. There is um, a blood pressure component to filtering the blood as they pass through the kidneys. And we'll get into that later in the year, okay? Um, excretion and secretion. Well, what things excrete and secrete are glands. And we talked about the fact that epithelial tissue makes up glands as well. Um, we'll do a little lab. Um, I don't know if we'll do it now, but nevertheless, the, the nerve endings that allow you, or in many cases, allow you to respond and detect changes in your environment are found in the epithelial tissues. Um, and we'll look at that. I will look at uh, skin really quick, probably next week. Um, anyway, so when you're looking at a slide or a micrograph of a tissue, how are you supposed to tell whether it's epithelial or not? Well, there are some things you can look for. First of all, the cells are side by side and they form a sheet. There's no space in between the cells. Um, they're lined up. Well, it depends on what their the structure is. But you'll see that there is no space between the cells. When we get to talking about connective tissue, that's going to be the 
one of the main ways that you tell the difference between the two just by looking at the pictures. So epithelial tissue form sheets. They have an apical surface, which means a surface exposed to an opening. Um, adjacent to a lumen, a lumen is another word for a space. So, um, so we can go back to where in the slideshow it said that epithelial tissues are found lining things. Well, the apical surface of the epithelial is exposed to the lumen, which is the space. And we'll look at those in a few minutes. All right, they also all have a basement membrane. Usually it says it goes epithelial tissue, basement membrane, and then deep to the epithelial tissue, there is a connective layer, connective tissue layer. The, I picture the basement membrane as kind of, you know, that green plate that you can get with Legos. So you can, it's like a, Supposed, I suppose it's supposed to be grass. And then you can put all the Legos right on there to sort of hold it together. So the green plate is kind of like your basement membrane. And then all your little bricks, as long as you put them side by side and there's no space in between, um, are your epithelial cells. Okay? Now, this sounds weird to say that epithelial tissue has no blood in it. But do you ever scrape your skin and... You know, you clearly s removed some skin from your body, but there's no blood. And that's true because the epithelial layers do not have blood vessels in them. The deeper layers of connective tissue have tons of blood vessels in there. So there's a, um, a lot of diffusion going on there back and forth. But anyway, epithelials, no blood vessels. And they tend to... Um, heal pretty easily. Uh, you, you know, the younger you are, the faster you're going to heal. And, um, and you can see that mostly on your skin, but often if you have a, a wound inside your mouth, for example, it usually heals pretty quickly. Um, and that's lined with epithelial tissue. All right. So classification is important simply because it's these classifications that are used to name them. So the names will tell you what, something about them. So there are squamous cells, which tend to be flat and scale-like. So if you look in that picture on the slideshow here, you see those purple, light purple sort of circles with the dark purple in the middle. And we're looking at an epithelial cell from the top. They kind of look like pancakes with a blueberry in the middle or something. If you were to look at them from the side, they would be just almost a line because they're so flat. And we'll take a look at those from a couple different perspectives in a little while. Um, cuboidal shaped uh, or cuboidal classification is because they're cube shaped. Now, you could look at that picture and say, Miss Milliner, they're not really cubes. Yeah, you're right. What they are, though, is they're about as tall as they are wide. And that's what makes them cuboidal. All right, so... Yeah, you're right. They're not like little Legos, but that's how you have to look at that. And the last classification based on cell shape is columnar. Columnar, column. So they're long, so they're taller than they are wide. And if you look at that micrograph over to the left, um, the light pink are the individual cells. The dark pink are the nuclei that are inside each individual cell. So there's a whole bunch of cells just in that row. All right, an epithelial can also be characterized or classified by the number of layers of cells. Right? If there's only one layer of cells, it's called simple. Easy enough to remember. If there are multiple layers of cells, it's called stratified. And there's this other thing called pseudo-stratified. Pseudo meaning not really pretending, um, yeah, not exactly. So pseudo-stratified means it looks like it's stratified, but it really isn't. So if you look at that last micrograph over on the right, all of those darker purple things are nuclei, and they're not all lined up nice in a, in a nice row like you can see on that top micrograph. So, so that implies that there are different cells at different heights, which there aren't. So um, we're going to be putting these terms together in the class. We're going to be 
combining the cell shape with the number of layers, and we're going to be looking at um, apical surfaces and basement membranes and lumens and all that stuff. So, um, if you have any questions, write them down, bring them to class, and I'll see you later.